As a brief introduction, I, I think the central origin of the crisis, particularly in the United States, was from the housing market. And I'll try to detail why I think that's true, particularly housing in relation to the uh, mortgage financing and the developments in that uh, sector. I think there was a critical mistake made in terms of underestimating the possibility that housing prices could fall on average because basically this was an unprecedented event, particularly in terms of the magnitude of the decline in average house prices in the U.S. And I think that was the precipitating uh, agent uh, for the crisis, both in the U.S. and uh, elsewhere. And indeed, this uh, aspect of house prices interacts with developments in the financial sector in terms of new products, securitizations, uh, and so on. Um, I think a number of mistakes were made here, but I think it's critical to realize that these mistakes have basically been learned, particularly by the financial sector. And it's unlikely that the next crisis is going to look like that. And then it's probably not the best source of uh, policy change to try to fix the mistake that maybe caused the crisis but has already been learned. And indeed, I think the most likely next crisis is going to have to do with governments per se. And it's not going to be such a good thing if governments are going to try to keep the private sector from doing something to avoid the crisis that was perhaps uh, what it looked like in 2008, 2009. Um, so let me try to give some of the data. This will be from a U.S. perspective, but I think a lot of it is uh, global uh, in nature. Uh, so this is just a picture of the uh, Great Recession from the U.S. perspective, uh, measured in terms of the growth rate of the real gross domestic product. Uh, and I think you can see uh, readily the recession in terms of the negative part. Uh, it accumulates to a decline in GDP by 4.1%. I don't know if that sounds impressive. It actually is the largest uh, post-World War II decline, uh, bigger than the other recessions, not by a lot, but a little bit bigger. Uh, it certainly does not measure up to the Great Depression of the 1930s. And in this metric, it's not at all uh, uh, comparable. Uh, if you look at it relative to trend, then you can say there was a loss of 9% in GDP, which is, it makes it look bigger, because normally the economy, the U.S. economy, grows at about 3% per year. So if instead it was negative 4.1% for some period, that's a more substantial loss relative to the normal uh, growth. Uh, the other thing that's been true, and has been particularly a concern recently, is the weakness of the recovery period, which is shown over here. So the average growth rate of GDP since the recovery began is less than 3% per year, uh, which means it's not really a recovery in the sense of restoring something back to, to the trend. And this, I think, relates to why the labor market has been so weak. So it's been a very disappointing recovery, and in fact, it looks worse now than it did perhaps uh, six months ago or so. Uh, by way of contrast, you can look at recoveries from some other uh, recessions. Uh, so one is the Reagan period, uh, basically the 1980s. It was a pretty substantial recession through 1982. But then the recovery is quite remarkable. Uh, for pretty much the rest of the 1980s going into 1990, the average growth rate in the recovery period is 4.3% uh, per year. And I think a lot of this particular recovery is driven by tax policy changes. There are quite substantial reductions in marginal income tax rates in this period, or early 1980s and again in 1986. Uh, this was something new, really, that Reagan had, uh, had led, and I think it was quite an important uh, factor in terms of the strength of the recovery. So an average growth rate well over 4.4% uh, for this long a period is, is something impressive and very different from the current uh, recovery. Another uh, period you can look at is the 1990s. This is another strong period in the U.S. This is mostly when Clinton uh, is president. So this follows the moderate recession around 90, 1991. Uh, the average growth rate in this recovery is a little bit lower than Reagan. It's 3.6% per year, but it's a very extended recovery. Basically, uh, almost all of the 1990s going into 2000. Um, the two heroes in terms of post-World War II economic policy and results in the U.S., I think, are Reagan and Clinton, which shows you how nonpartisan I am in my approach to the results. Uh, 
Uh, I think at least in the way things turned out, Clinton turned out to be quite a conservative in terms of economic policy. And I think in that sense, he's kind of a twin with Reagan rather than being something uh, uh, different from that. Uh, this table just shows the global nature of the Great Recession. Uh, the U.S. decline, I mentioned, was a little more than 4%, uh, going up to the end of the recession in early 2009. Uh, the U.S. is certainly not exceptional in terms of the severity. It's actually a little bit less than the average. Uh, for these 21 OECD countries, the extent of the GDP decline averages about 5.5%, somewhat more than the U.S. Uh, several countries have declines of more than 10% which is the metric I usually use to uh, ascribe whether or not there's a, a rare macroeconomic disaster that has occurred. This is in a larger and longer term study. So some countries like Japan and uh, Ireland and Finland, for example, are in that category. The decline was more than 10%. Uh, Greece would be in that category if you included uh, all of 2010, which is not in this uh, table. So several countries are uh, more than 10% declines in, in GDP. 